Hey everybody. You know, they say every good video starts with a good hook. Now this video is going to be entirely about hooks. I've got my smaller of my two reticulated pythons here. And we're going to go over the difference between hook training and hook handling and how important it is when we're dealing with these guys. And I'm going to get my larger of my two reticulated pythons to help me demonstrate that. When we come back on Intrepid Exotics. Hey there guys, hope you're having an outstanding day. Today we're going to be talking about the most important tool in your snake keeping toolbox, and that's your snake hook, and the different ways that it's implemented. You've got hook training, hook handling, and poking a giant apex predator with a pointy stick before you try and handle it. Uh, I don't have any venomous snakes here, but I do have my female ball python, and she identifies as a rattlesnake. So we're going to use her to help demonstrate some hook handling and show the difference between that and hook training. Big difference. And especially with large constrictors, you're not going to be doing a great deal of hook handling with these guys. So the reason why hook training is so important is because these animals, they're apex predators, they're ambush hunters, and that instinct doesn't go away just because we've got them in captivity. Um, they will lay in wait, waiting for movement, waiting to pick up heat. And if they're hungry and your hand goes in there, it's hot and it's moving. And there's a good likelihood that they're going to react to that, think it's food, and go after it. Because these guys can't run and catch their prey. They've got one split-second opportunity to get it before that animal bolts away and they lose an opportunity to eat. So like I said, that instinct doesn't go away once we get them in captivity. So we need to be able to communicate to them what our intentions are and kind of snap them out of that mode. Um, this girl right here has no problem being handled. You've seen her earlier. She's all over the place. There's nothing aggressive, mean about her at all. But again, she is a retic. She does have a hot food response when she's hungry. And there have been times that I've opened up the door and she's went after the snake hook. The, the hook was cold. <laughs> and the very fact that there was something moving in her enclosure, it just sent her off and she went after it. So quick disclaimer, like I said, I'm not a venomous keeper. And this is by no means meant to be an instructional video on how to handle venomous snakes. This is simply meant to demonstrate the difference between hook handling and hook training. When you're handling the snake with the hook, you're worried about the pointing end. So, you're using the hook to keep the head away from you. You want to use that hook to control the head. Or your other hand controls the tail. So, this is handling a snake with a hook. Um, big difference between this and tap training. This is a lot more involvement with the hook, and you're going to see the difference when I go to tap tigger out. So, this is what you do. This is what you see, rather, when you see somebody hook handling that. Put the hook back in there. Okay, so this is my male retake right here. He's about pushing 60 pounds. He's about 14 feet long and you don't have to excuse the awkward camera angle since he's down low. So you get a good shot of my garden tools back there as well. But I want you to be able to see how I go in here. Um, you can see he is very relaxed right now. He's curled up. He's on his basking platform. He's really happy. And a couple things that I want to do here is one, I want to make sure that he's not sleeping and doesn't wake up seeing sensing my hand and going after it and i don't want to overuse the hook to put him in a bad mood 60 pound retake in a bad mood is a handful so i only get one chance to uh 
handle him for the first time today, and this is it. So I'm going to do my level best not to uh, mess up too bad. So, him. I always end up opening the door with the hook. It's safer that way. I don't want my hand, I don't want any heat anywhere near him in my first, first exposure. So I'm staying with the glass between me and his head. And I'm opening it up. Now all I want to do is wake him up. See? Kind of startled him a little bit. Now that right there puts him, he's a little bit uncomfortable right now. I just woke him up and it's just like us. When we first wake up, we're kind of groggy, we're kind of grumpy. So now this is the point where people will make a mistake and they'll start poking and poking and poking. And man, well, he looks, he's a little messed up right now. He looks a little tense. So let's see if we can poke him with a stick and calm him down. Well, that, that doesn't work. So what I'm gonna do is where he's at, I'm gonna come around behind his head. I'm gonna come around to this side and see how he's starting to move away a little bit. I'm not gonna touch him with the hook anymore. This is not hook handling, it's tap training. I'm gonna come in and put my hand on him. See, now he knows that my hand's there. Now he's moving away. Not too happy about the idea of coming out. But now that I've got my hand on him, the hook goes down. And I'll show you something that you can do too, what some people will do, is you can kind of keep the hook between them, between their head. Of course, he's running away now, so that's not gonna, not gonna matter. He doesn't want to be messed with right now at all. There we go. Come on, buddy. There's a quick point I want to make here, too. You can see how I'm wrestling with him, how he's trying to get away. That's pretty common. A lot of times when you go into the enclosure, they'll just start moving the other direction. And... It's perfectly fine to, to you know, wrestle with them a little bit, but from the onset here, you don't want to have a bad experience with this animal and you don't want to stress him out. So you do some rustling with him, but there comes a point in time where you need to let go, let the animal do what it's going to do, let it relax, let it get comfortable and reassess and approach it from a different angle. <laughs> this is a pretty good example that things don't always go the way you want them to when you're dealing with an animal. <laughs> so, now he's back there. He really doesn't want to be messed with. He's wrapped around his water bowl. I'm not going to go in there after his head. What I am going to do, I'm going to come to the other side of the enclosure. Kind of tickle his tail a little bit and get him moving back to where I want him. And now that his tail is not wrapped around his water bowl, reach in, pull him out towards me a little bit, get my hand on him. Ah. And we're going to take him out. And these guys are fairly used to being handled, so once I get him out of the enclosure, it's his time to roam around, check stuff out. So we got to have some quality time with this boy while I've got him out, and uh, he's a workout. This is a heavy animal, and I keep it about 80 degrees down here in my reptile room, so... You can see how powerful this guy is. 
how big he is. He's a handful, that's for sure. And he is a typical retake. When he gets out, he just wants to run. So, uh, for the sake of finishing the video, I'm going to put him. Well, hello. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put him up, put him back. And then we'll talk about this some more. So on a side note, I've actually got a studio audience here as I'm filming today because Niles is hanging out. I think he's ready for some attention later today. Thank you there, buddy. It's a good boy. There you go. Say hi to everybody. It's a good boy. I'm going to spend some time with him a little later after we get done here. So I'm going to make another video on him down the road. He is an awesome animal. And he is... A challenging animal this is definitely not a beginner reptile but he is just awesome I love this guy okay so real quick I'm gonna do one more example with my male Burmese here and this snake right here loves to get out every time I come down here he's always right there to go glass watching waiting for me to get him out but no matter how comfortable you are with your snake it's always good have a hook in hand, tap them down when you first go because they can surprise you. Now you're going to see too, I've got the handles of his uh, enclosures tied down, the handles of his doors rather, and I've got a wedge back here, and this is what keeps him secure, because this particular enclosure only has one of those really small plastic tracks down at the bottom, and you can call the berm dumb all day long if you want to. But if I don't secure this like that, he knows how to get out. So when I get moved, when I get a bigger place, I'm going to make him another enclosure. Um, and then I'm just going to alter this one so it's got a thicker track down the bottom. But anyway. So he's there. I'm going to open the door. I'm just going to come under there with the hook and say, hey, buddy, how you doing? I'm not dinner. And he knows that. And he wants to come out and be involved in everything, too. So, like I said, you can see the difference in behavior, too, between retics and berms. This guy is so much easier to handle. He's not a whole lot lighter. Um, he's about a 12-foot animal, and he's right around between 40 and 50 pounds somewhere. But... If anybody ever asks you what the difference is between a berm and a retic, I'm a lot more relaxed now than I was trying to wrestle a retic around. Um, these guys are a little bit easier to handle. So if you're looking at getting a big snake and you're not looking for somebody that you got to wrestle with, berms may be the way to go for you. Personally, I love retics. They're spicy. They keep things interesting. And although this guy's intent on getting out right now, I'm going to put him back because we got stuff to talk about. So, come on, bud. Back in there. So, I hope you got something out of that. I hope that illustrated the difference between handling with a hook and tap training with a hook. Um, and you can see with a bigger snake, 30, 40, 50, 100 pounds, you're not handling them with a hook. You've got to handle them with your hands. They're entirely too heavy to mess with with a hook. And that hook is just a telegraph. It's a means of communication. To let them know what your intent is and to make sure you don't have any accidents with them. Um, and for a lot of you guys too that have got smaller retics, it's a pretty good illustration of what you've got to look forward to. Uh, those guys, they're a lot of fun and they will make you work up a sweat every time you start working with them. Uh, and it's the same thing with the berms except he's a little bit more mellow. Uh, and this is my female Burmese back here that I had in another video. Um, at some point, I'm going to go through and do a really in-depth video on all the animals that I've got. Right now, I just wanted to get the get the ideas about hook training um, and how important that is, and you know the right ways to go about it so that you're not upsetting your animal <clears throat> and you're not getting yourself hurt and you're not having bad experiences with them. So, again, I hope that was helpful. If you guys liked it, like it. If you've got any questions or comments. 
please leave them down there. I love reacting to them. I love seeing what everybody thinks about it. And if you've got any ideas for other videos that you'd like to see, or if you'd like to see me get my butt kicked by uh, Tigger again, I'm more than happy to do that. We both have a lot of fun together. So, you guys have an outstanding day. Like, subscribe, a whole ball of wax, and I'll see you next time around. Have a good day.